Hello and welcome back to the ICE doc. This is Tamaris Barons and here's another lecture on perioperative and critical care transthoracic echo. In today's presentation, we will talk about how to measure the left ventricular size and how to calculate the global left ventricular function using the modified Simpson's method of discs. In previous videos, we talked about how to measure the fractional area change, fractional shortening, epoint septal separation, which are all methods of estimating the ejection fraction. The modified Simpson's method is actually a way to measure the ejection fraction. The recommended method to calculate the left ventricular volumes and ejection fraction is the biplane method of disc summation, otherwise known as the modified Simpson's method of discs. This is the recommendation from the American Society of Echocardiography. It involves calculations in two orthogonal planes, so it requires tracing the endocardial border in both the apical four-chamber view and the apical two-chamber view in both end of diastole and end of systole. The biggest advantage is that it corrects for shape distortions, so it is a better way of measuring the left ventricular volumes. Since you are visually tracing the left ventricular endocardial border in two planes, there are less geometrical assumptions occurring. The biggest limitation of the biplane technique is occasional inability to visualize the endocardial border. Sometimes the apex can be foreshortened, so you cannot see exactly where the left ventricular cavity ends. Some other times, you may have endocardial dropout, meaning the blood tissue interface is not well visualized, and depending on the quality of your image, you may not be able to trace the left ventricle very well. If that is the case, Cardiologists may choose to use echo contrast to delineate the endocardial border better. Since we are calculating the left ventricular volume from only two views, if there are shape distortions in other areas, they will not be included in the measurements. Let's make some measurements. First, you need to acquire the best apical four chamber and apical two chamber views that you can get and save them. Then you select one, in this case, we selected the apical four chamber view. Then select the measure button on your ultrasound and then the trace area option. When tracing the LV volume, you want to measure the end diastolic volume and the end systolic volume. End systole is defined as the frame after aortic valve closure or the frame where the cardiac dimension is the smallest. In this case, we don't see the aortic valve, so we will determine which frame the LV looks the biggest and the smallest visually. You would need to start in the mitral valve ring and trace the left ventricle. When you reach the opposite end of the mitral ring, the machine would connect the two ends by a straight line. When measuring the LV volume, you're basically tracing the blood tissue interface, so you want to be as close to the endocardium as possible. It is very important to note that you should not include the papillary muscles or the trabeculations in the endocardial tracing. The length of the LV is the distance from the middle of the line to the apex. As you see now, the discs appear on the screen. The LV volume is then derived by addition of the volumes of all of the discs. You will then have to repeat the same measurements for the end of systole. The echo machine will measure the ejection fraction in the apical four-chamber view, but as we mentioned earlier, the recommendation is that you measure it in two orthogonal planes. 90 degrees from the apical four-chamber view is the apical two-chamber view. To save time, I did not include the measurements for the apical two-chamber view, but basically you measure the endocardial border just like I showed you in the apical four-chamber view. The LV volume is calculated using the equation on the right. It basically adds the volumes from all the discs from the endocardial border tracing. Luckily, you don't have to memorize or even use this equation since all modern ultrasound machines have it in the software. After calculating the end diastolic and end systolic volumes, the ejection fraction is calculated by subtracting the end diastolic volume by the end systolic volume and dividing the number by the end diastolic volume. I included the mean values with two standard deviations of the left ventricular volume in injection fraction. These values are taken from the American Society of Echocardiography guidelines. As you can see, there is variations between different genders. 
For males, the left ventricular end diastolic volume is 106 plus minus 44, and the end systolic volume is 41 plus minus 20. For females, however, the left ventricular end diastolic volume is 76 plus minus 30, and the end systolic volume is 28 plus minus 14. There's also variations in the ejection fraction. For males, the ejection fraction is 62 plus minus 10, and females, 64 plus minus 10. In general, it is good practice to avoid making clinical decisions based off of the absolute values. Instead, it is better to index them to body surface area. The table on the right has the indexed values. Here are the values for the severity of the left ventricular dilation. Note that these values are indexed to body surface area. Again, notice the gender differences. For example, left ventricular dilation is more than 100 cc's per meter squared in males and 80 for females. Here are the values of what is considered abnormal for the left ventricular ejection fraction. Normal in males is 52 to 72. Mildly abnormal is 41 to 51. Moderately abnormal, 30 to 40. And severely abnormal, less than 30%. The values for females are very similar. The only ranges of values that are different are the normal range and the mildly abnormal range. The normal is 54 to 74 and the mildly abnormal is 41 to 53. The moderate and severe depressed ejection fraction are the same in both females and males. This concludes the lecture on the left ventricular size and function. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you check out our website, YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter to stay updated when new videos come out. If you like the lectures, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and share.